Yes, guys. So when we look at this standard of India's 41, which deals with agriculture, it primarily deals with three things. One, biological assets. Number two, agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Number three, government grants related to agriculture. Guys, these three are very common. Okay. These are not, may, maybe you're hearing those terms for the very first time, but they're not something that are uncommon to us on a daily basis. First one is biological asset. Second one is agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Third one is government grants related to agriculture. Guys, government grants we have already dealt with under India S20. So India S20 will continue to apply. But however, related to agriculture, there are certain provisions that we need to uh, uh, explain related to a government grant. Now, if I look at the first one, being talking where we talk about a biological asset, what is a biological asset and how, what do you understand by this term biological asset? Guys, I'll put it like this. Biological asset is a plant or a living animal. It is a plant or an animal. Now, however, under India 16, we cover a concept called as bearer plant. What is the difference between bearer plant, which we discuss as a part of India 16? And what is the difference between a biological asset, which we discuss as per India 41? Let me tell you. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, I'm just giving you an example here. Let's say I have a plantation of mangoes. Okay, everyone loves mangoes. So I have a plantation of mangoes in my farm. And these plantation of mangoes during the season, sometime between February to June, we'll get some mango produce. This produce which we get, we will pluck it out of it and make sure that we are selling it. Next season, again, the same plant without even uprooting, without even removing the plant, no improvement which happened. But this plant continues to give the produce during the season. Like this, it continuously gives me a produce for about 15 to 20 years or even 30 years as well. So these plants are called as bearer plants. A bearer plant gives you an agricultural produce over the period of time. That means it has a utility or a useful life of more than 12 months. That is why they get covered under India 60. Because it is within the control of enterprise. Future of economic benefits arise, can be measured reliably, and lastly, they are expected to be used for more than 12 months. Then why are, what are biological assets? What are biological assets and how are they different from your bearer plants? Your biological assets are, let's say, I give you the example of banana plantation. A banana plant normally gives you only one single fruit, one single lot of bananas, that's it. So one such lot of bananas are produced out of a banana plant. That banana plant is of no longer any use. You chop off the plant right from their roots. Because their roots are useful, their stem is useful, their leaf is useful. Because even if you leave it for any longer period, it is not going to reproduce another fruit out there. So these are called as biological assets because they are not uh, expected to be used for more than 12 months. Potatoes, your cash crops like your rice, wheat, maize. These are basically your commercial crops uh, uh, where you have to make sure that to get the agricultural produce, I have to chop up the plant or I have to harvest the entire plant itself. They are called as biological assets. They are not covered under India 16 as bearer plants. If I talk about a bearer plant, then I have to cover it under India 16 where I either recognize it under cost approach or revaluation approach. But biological assets, there is no particular recognition under India 16. So we needed a separate standard for that. Therefore, it gets covered under India's 41 agriculture. Now guys, India is particularly talking about applicability to companies, right? Why agriculture? Agriculture in India today is such an unorganized segment. You have individual farmers who are basically involved in agriculture. Is it necessary for India's 41 to talk about agriculture? Is agriculture on today's date performed in corporate form? Answer is yes. There are a lot of companies on today's date and more companies are coming up on today's date which are involving themselves in agriculture. We have a client who is basically into a seed manufacturing company. So they basically give seeds to farmers. 
these farmers will produce plantations these will give rise to more seeds so one bag of seeds which i give to farmer the farmer gives me back 100 100 bags of seeds so these are seed manufacturing companies purely performing the uh, the function of agriculture very recently i've been looking at <clears throat> your facebook and i see a post saying that two iim graduates or two iit graduates i don't remember but they have been making a revenue of almost a crore per day only from agricultural produce somewhere near pune so you need to understand that today agriculture is taking a corporate form it has been taking a corporate form even in the past there were companies like sangi sangi plantations many other plantations companies have come in where the plantations were basically done in corporate form so therefore biological assets or agricultural produce from this biological assets or bearer plants have to be dealt under a particular recognition criteria now why a separate standard why can't it be merged with some other standard i'll tell you because the point is these assets biological assets or agriculture produce there is no particular cost which i can associate to it a mango plantation mango tree was laid so there were some saplings which are bought they have been erected they have been let alone like that there's a biological transformation which happened where the tree has grown up big and started giving me produce and this agricultural produce once at the time of harvest when i got this mango what is the cost of this mango did you spend anything for that absolutely no the cost is zero or very minimal so therefore this requires a specific measurement principle let's say we are into rearing of cattle so there were cows which i already own i am into a dairy farm two cows have actually mated and they gave give rise to a new calf what is the cost of the new calf? Can you tell me? So I was into, let's say, poultry, and there was an egg which hatched and gave up raised to a new chicken. So I my my concept is what is the cost of the new chick? Is there any particular cost that you incurred? Absolutely no. It's a biological transformation which happened. Therefore, what is the cost of the new chick or the new calf? I cannot determine because there is no particular cost which is associated to these assets. When there is no cost associated to these assets, then recognition and measurement of these assets become very, very, very important. That is particularly the reason why we come across this concept of India's 41 agriculture, which requires a different recognition and measurement cycles. Clear? So now you understood the concept of agriculture. Remember, like I told you, India's 41 deals with only three aspects. Biological assets. Agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Why am I specifying at the point of harvest, at the point of harvest, at the point of harvest? I'll come to that logic. Give me a second. And then lastly, garment grants. It particularly excludes land which on which the agricultural produce is being grown. Number two, bearer plants which are already covered under India 16. Land is also covered under India 16 itself. Any biological, tran any transformation in the product other than biological transformation. Okay. So these are particularly excluded from the concept of the standard in days 41. Same way, garment grants related to the bearer plants are also excluded. Only garment grants related to biological assets or garment grants related to agricultural produce are covered under the standard. But your any garment grant given for a bearer plant cannot be covered under the standard India is 41. So let's see what the standard talks about. It talks about biological assets, agricultural produce, and grants related to agriculture. Specifically exclude bearer plants, grants related to bearer plants, land used for agriculture, and any intangible asset. Now, as we progress, the first thing that I have to talk about is what is the definition? How do I define what is a biological asset? How do I define what is an agricultural produce? A biological asset is nothing but a living plant or animal which is not a bearer plant. Bearer plants covered under India 16, so specifically excluded. So any other living plant or animal which cannot be categorized as bearer plants should get covered under this concept of biological asset. What is agricultural produce? When you harvest these biological assets or harvest the bearer plants, the produce which I get is called as agricultural produce. Agricultural produce results from the harvest of biological assets and bearer plants. 
what is agricultural activity an activity which relates to agriculture getting covered under the standard is either the harvest or a biological transformation which happens question comes up what is this biological transformation biological transformation biological transformation so many times you are using this logic what do you mean by biological transformation? What is not a biological transformation? Let's say I have a rubber plantation. Okay. From the rubber plantation, I extract some liquid called as latex. Latex is an agricultural produce. Using this latex, I create some or I produce some rubber products. Producing rubber products from the latex cannot be considered as a biological transformation it cannot be considered as biological transformation reproduction i give you a bag of seeds you give me back 100 seeds biological transformation because you sow the seeds automatically because of the land it has given me multiple more seeds that is biological transformation i rear cattle automatically the cattle has reproduced and i got a new calf i got a new chick so in this way we can say that having a new animal or a new plant produced also can be called as biological transformation tea any tea garden will you normally harvest in the form of tea leaf the tea leaf which you harvest is called as agricultural produce but using this tea leaf i dry the tea leaf process it and will get tea from it a tea powder from it or a tea bag from it that cannot be considered as biological transformation because it is a manufacturing process here so manufacturing process is excluded from the standard only biological transformation is covered under the standard then what is a biological transformation biological transformation is production where i get agricultural produce growth increase in quantity or increase in quality of the product is also a biological transformation degeneration decrease in quality Decrease in quantity is also called as biological transformation. Procreation, where a new plant or animal is generated or created biologically is called as procreation. Either of these processes are called as biological transformation, which can be included in the definition of agricultural activity to be covered under India's 41. So what are the four things? Production, growth, degeneration, procreation. Production means deriving agricultural produce from harvest is called as agricultural activity or a biological transformation of production. Growth, where I increase the quantity or increase the quality of the agricultural produce. Whenever I am talking about degeneration, I am decreasing the quantity or decreasing the quality of the agricultural produce. Procreation, where a new plant or an animal is generated biologically or created biologically, you call it as procreation. These activities can be called as agricultural activities. They should be covered under the scope of India's 41. Clear? Now, let's get into this concept. Understanding what is an agricultural activity and what is not an agricultural activity which is covered, which is not covered under India's 41. If I have a biological asset or a bearer plant in the form of a rubber tree, which is a bearer plant, the produce or the biological activity is production of latex. But from the latex, if I produce rubber products, then it cannot be considered as biological transformation. It is a process of production which should not be covered under India's 41. So once I got the agricultural produce, your application of India's 41 stops. From latex, if I produce a rubber product, then it goes into India's 2 valuation of inventory. Clear? I rear a cattle, sheep, biological asset. I extract wool from the skin. That is basically a biological transformation or an agricultural activity. Using this wool, I generate some woolen cloth. At the point of extracting wool, your agricultural activity is done, completed. So you no longer can further apply the standard. So agricultural produce at the point of harvest will stop and India's 41 will cease to apply. Once I extracted the wool, this wool being applied for woolen clothing is a pure process of manufacture which will be covered under India's 2. Dairy cattle, I have milked 
or I, I the dairy cattle normally produce some milk. So this process of milking is an agricultural activity which results in milk being produced which is an agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Using this milk, I produce, I packeted the milk or I created cheese or paneer or butter or multiple other dairy products. That is a process of manufacture covered under India's 2. Clear? So this way you need to understand what is the point at which the standard ceases to apply. The standard ceases to apply for agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Further processing of this agricultural produce is not covered under the standard because at the beginning I already I told you that this standard in days 41 applies to biological assets, agricultural produce at the point of harvest, only at the point of harvest. After harvest, any further production happens, it shall not be covered under India's 40, uh, 41, but should be covered under respective standard. In most circumstances, it is India's 2, that is inventory. Clear? Now, what is the recognition criteria? When should I recognize an agricultural produce or when should I recognize a biological asset? When the entity controls the asset as a result of its past event. Control, similar definition of control under recognition criteria we have seen under India's 16, 38 and 40 regarding PPE, intangible assets and investment property. There, okay, control. Here, biological assets can be controlled. How do you control? If I have a massive mango plantation, how do you exercise control? I put a gate outside. I number the tree. If I have a cattle, I number the cattle. I make sure that they are not exiting my gate without, uh, uh, you know, uh, without authorization. In such cases, legal ownership and branding will normally give you a control. Future economic benefits are probable to arise either from sale or from further production of the biological asset or a bearer plant. You normally get some future economic benefits. A biological asset or a bearer plant you normally harvest to derive agricultural produce. This agricultural produce is definitely giving me some economic benefit. Clear? And then you can say that the recognition criteria is satisfied. And lastly, the fair value or the cost of this biological asset and agricultural produce can be reliably measured. If you remember in days 16 and 38, we were talking about only cost can be reliably measured. Here we are saying even if the fair value can be reliably measured, you can recognize the asset. That means higher emphasis is laid on the word fair value when we discuss about India's 41. So what are the three recognition criteria? Control arising from past event. Generally control emerges from legal ownership or branding. Number two, future economic benefits are probable to arise either by harvesting the agricultural produce or by sale of the biological asset itself. Clear? Number three, either the cost or the fair value of these biological assets or agricultural produce can be measured reliably. If these three conditions are met, then I can recognize a biological asset or an agricultural produce under India's 41. Let's look at the concept of measurement then. If I have a biological asset which is a living plant or an animal, in the case of cattle it is an animal, in the case of agricultural activity of, uh, of growing plantations, then it is a, a, a biological asset. In such biological assets, always biological assets should be valued at fair value less cost to sell. Fair value less cost to sell. This is again the same value. If you remember, we have applied in India's 36 regarding impairment and we called it with a word called as net selling price under India's 36. We have also applied this valuation under NRV of inventory where fair value or uh, sell, estimated selling price minus cost to sell. Same way we applied this formula under index 105, non-current assets held for sale, where we applied the logic that a non-current asset held for sale should be valued at lower of carrying value or fair value less cost to sell. Same formula I am applying it here. Here for a biological asset, the value of biological asset should be either fair value minus cost to sell. Agricultural produce at the point of harvest also should be valued in the same manner. Fair value, less cost to sell. 
agricultural produce there is no other alternative but to measure them at fair value why because cost cannot be measured reliably i told you mango what is the cost i can't measure reliably because i only grew the plantation mango came free of cost that is the reason why where cost cannot be measured reliably agricultural produce should always be measured at fair value less cost to sell but when i talk about biological assets though your valuation principle primarily is fair value less cost to sell there is an exception rule which is insert the exception rule says if i am not able to measure the fair value of the biological asset reliably if reliable measurement of fair valuation is not possible then i can apply cost approach the same cost approach that we have adopted even as per india 1638 or 40 where we apply cost minus accumulated depreciation clear so measurement of biological asset should be at fair value less cost to sell unless the fair value cannot be measured reliably if the determination of fair value cannot be measured it cannot be ascertained reliably in such case i'll apply a cost model where the it will be valued at cost minus accumulated depreciation any agricultural produce derived from the biological asset or from the bearer plant should be valued at the point of harvest only and at the point of harvest it should be measured at fair value less cost to sell if this agricultural produce is further applied for manufacturing some products then whatever your application is has to be dealt as per indias 2 according to indias 2 the material which is valued at fair value less cost to sell on the date of produce or at the point of harvest should be included as cost of material in production process clear a fair value of a biological asset cannot be measured reliably if the quoted market price is not available or alternate fair value method is unreliable there is no quoted market an alternate approach of fair valuation is giving me unreliable information in such cases i cannot apply fair value in such cases what did we say fair value cannot be measured reliably apply cost approach let's say initially the fair value could not be measured reliably so i measured the biological asset on cost model subsequently in the in the next financial year fair value became available to in such cases i will shift from cost approach to fair valuation approach clear i'm saying initially the fair value on a balance sheet date could not be measured reliably so i adopted cost model for measuring a biological asset but subsequently in the next financial year the fair value became available therefore i can shift from cost model to fair value model why is it possible initially the fair value was available i measured it on fair value basis or fair value minus cost to sell subsequently the fair value could not be determined can i go back to cost model answer is no cost approach can go into fair value but fair value cannot go into cost approach subsequently clear sometimes i am only saying sometimes the cost of an asset is equal to fair value what are those situations let's say i am into sandalwood plantation my sandalwood plantation will give me an agricultural produce after 14 years on balance sheet date my sandalwood plantation is exactly 100 days old 100 days old and i'm saying you will get agricultural produce after how many years 14 years 100 days that means the biological transformation which have occurred during the 100 days is very minimal very immaterial in such cases the cost can be considered as fair value okay where there is a very little biological transformation or even if there is a biological transformation it is immaterial in such cases your cost can be considered as fair value i have given you the example of timber plantation 14 years timber plantation on balance sheet date if it is 100 days old or 120 days old then you can say that the biological transformation which has undergone is very little or immaterial therefore in such cases the cost is an approximate fair value now whenever i measure it at fair value will always give rise to gain or loss guys immediately if you look at agricultural produce agricultural produce itself is being measured at fair value less cost to sell so that means the gain or loss on agricultural produce arises at the point of harvest itself 
Initially, what is the cost? Nothing. So when I measured it at fair value less cost to sell, automatically I gave raise to a gain. Because how do you recognize agricultural produce? Agricultural produce account debit to gain at the point of harvest. Agricultural produce account debit to gain at the point of harvest. So this gain at the point of harvest being transferred to PNL. So always remember whenever I have an agricultural produce, the fair value of the agricultural produce should be recognized to the credit of PNL at the point of harvest itself. If I am applying it in subsequent, uh, you know, subsequently into manufacturing process, then the fair value of the agricultural produce should be a cost in valuation of inventory. Should be considered as cost in valuation of inventory. What about biological assets? Year on year, I keep on measuring it at fair value less cost to sell. Then the difference between the fair value less cost to sell each year should be recognized in the PNL. If there is an increase in fair value, then I will credit it to PNL. Decrease in fair value, I will debit it to PNL. One year old calf still not in the situation to provide me milk. Valuation is less. Three year old cow, yes. Automatically it is able to milk it or we will be able to derive some milk from it. 100% there is an increase in the fair value of that particular cow. 10, 10 years over, the cow is not eligible or is not in a position to give you any further milk. What happened? Automatically the fair value has declined. So what happened? Year on year, I started recognizing gain, gain, gain because of increase in fair value of the biological asset. But after a certain point of time, when the production of milk from the cows like significantly declines, then the fair value of the cow also keeps falling down. In such cases, I will keep recognizing a loss in PNL. So biological asset, I will recognize a gain or loss on each balance sheet date. By measuring the biological asset at fair value less cost to sell, comparing it with fair value in the last year and recognizing the difference into the PNL. But regarding agricultural produce, you will only value the agricultural produce at the point of harvest at fair value less cost to sell. So on that day at the point of harvest, when you have recognized it at fair value less cost to sell, it should be immediately credited to PNL. I don't have to do it year on year. Clear? Coming down to the last point where we talk about garment grants related to agriculture. If the garment grant relates to an asset which is measured at cost, then this standard will not discuss about it. Here biological assets and agricultural produce both are being measured at fair value. They are not measured at cost. Therefore, India's 20 is not applicable. But when I talk about assets relating assets for which garment grant is received if these assets are measured at fair value both in the case of biological assets also in the case of agricultural produce the garment grant is received against the against the agricultural produce or biological assets which are measured at fair value in such case i will divide the grants into two types unconditional grants and conditional grants any farmer holding one acre of land one acre of land yearly is entitled to receive 14,000 from the state government. Unconditional grant. Your ownership has given rise to that particular income. Even if you are not doing any agricultural activity on that, you are still entitled to receive that grant. Clear? So whenever I talk about such unconditional grant, recognize the grant as income in the PNL immediately when the grant is receivable. Immediately when the grant is receivable, I will credit the PNL uh, with the amount of grant received. But if it is a conditional grant, I will give you per bag of rice, uh, you know, let's say 100 rupees of garment grant. If you produce at least 25 bags per acre for the next 5 years, conditional grant. In such case, I will recognize the grant uh, which are attached to the conditions as income in the PNL over the period for which the conditions attached to the grant are expected to be met. Here this conditional grant is very much in similar line with the standard India's 20 where even India's 20 had the same recognition principle where he said the government grant should be credited to PNL over the period for which the expenditure is expected to be met for, the, for satisfying the conditions attached to the grant. 
same rule applicable even for government grants which are conditional in nature relating to agriculture but generally grants on agriculture are unconditional in nature because agriculture in india is a sensitive political aspect sensitive political aspect so you need to understand that generally in india we have a lot of unconditional grants only these unconditional grants should be recognized as income when the grant is receivable now can i consider a binding sale agreement as fair value if you remember your india's 36 impairment when we are talking about determination of net selling price fair value minus cost to sell we had a particular discussion about determination of fair value where i had a binding sale agreement then the fair value is equal to the binding sale agreement price if binding sale agreement is not available then active market exists then determine your fair value based on active quoted market bid price if bid price is not available adjust if you cannot have an active market and you cannot determine fair value with respect to active market also in such case don't consider your net selling price straight forward your value in use is your recoverable amount this is what we have learnt as a part of india's 36 there the first emphasis was on binding sale agreement but here under india's 41 he says binding sale agreements are not considered as fair value because binding sale agreements are always entered at less than fair value that's why he says binding sale agreements are predetermined agreed price for agricultural produce expected to arise in future they are normally considered to be less than the fair value at the point of harvest that is the reason why they should not be considered as fair value what is a fair value then it is a market assessment of agricultural produce at the point of harvest so there could be a significant difference between a binding sale agreement price and the fair value even if there is a binding sale agreement price after the new farm reforms have come up you can get into a contract with a farmer to basically sell his produce at a predetermined price this is called as contract farming but you need to understand the price at which i agreed to sell the produce cannot be considered as fair value it is a binding sale agreement price it is for a price for the expected future agricultural produce so that cannot be considered as fair value because fair value is a market assessment of agricultural produce done at the point of harvest and that will bring us to the end of discussion on this standard in days 41 remember guys it's a very typical standard has a lot of concepts relating to fair valuation because it is very difficult to ascertain cost in case of biological assets or bearer plants so in um, in case of biological assets or agricultural produce the cost cannot be measured so therefore fair value is a much logical valuation of agricultural produce clear